So as I'm sure you're all aware, a certain F1 game came out last week, uh, let's just say I was having a whale of a time with it. Oh no! No, 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 Anyway, after a few hours of that, I got into Formula 1, somehow, and received an email. Hi Will, Lance Stroll is starting to show us up. They're outperforming us in all areas. Unless we step it up, they're going to leave us behind. Now bear with me, I'm about to throw myself off a bridge. That career low point aside, it did get me thinking. I wonder if Fernando Alonso is getting a very similar email right about now. When the Spaniard announced his switch to Aston Martin for 2023, everyone took one look and thought, yep, this is just the definition of self-harm at this point. Then of course, as we all know, Aston came out firing in the early part of the season. Fernando proving that he'd lost absolutely none of his speed, securing six podiums for the team in the first eight races. But then things started to go wrong. Aston was unable to match the upgrade pace of its rivals, and when they did bolt on some new bits onto the car, they somehow managed to make it worse. Despite their strong start, the team ended last year way down in fifth in the constructor standings. And if you think about it, that clueless form continuing into this year shouldn't have been much of a surprise. Combine that with the whole grid closing up as a result of the stable regulations, and the team that 12 months ago had the second fastest car, now find themselves battling to stay in the top 10 on any given race weekend. That's nothing new for Fernando, however, who has made a habit during his career of finding the worst seats possible on the grid. The Spaniard's ability to roll whatever shit he's given in glitter and then drive it into realms it really doesn't deserve to be in have been a staple of his career, and it's why he's still on the grid despite most other drivers going mad and joining Formula E by this age. Alonso will have to retire at some point though, and in the early races of this season, we all thought that may well very much be on the cards. Fernando remaining coy about his future amidst contract renegotiations with Aston Martin and other potential landing spots higher up the field. Toto Wolff and Christian Horner eventually opted not to touch Alonso with a 10-foot barge pole, however, and the Spaniard was left with the choice of staying in green or leaving the sport for good this time. Well, I guess he could have joined stake, but he's not that much of a f***ing idiot. Fernando's extension was announced back at the end of April, the 42-year-old claiming at the time that he would be the first person to put his hand up if he began to drop off the base. And that's interesting, as ever since that deal was signed, he really has fallen away. Round 6 of the season, Miami, a track that decided it wanted to rival the likes of Monaco in making F1 fans want to commit a double homicide. Qualifying would therefore be key, so why Fernando ended up in 15th. This was the same guy who, just a couple of weeks earlier, sat on the second row of the grid ahead of the Chinese Grand Prix. But it is just one poor result, and thankfully for Fernando, he was at least able to somewhat redeem himself by climbing up to ninth by the end of the Miami race weekend. The sport then headed to Imola, where Fernando got his motorsports mixed up and went into Saturday thinking he was qualifying for the Dakar Rally. He would have ended up 20th and last that afternoon, were it not for Logan Sargent showing us why he still deserves an F1 drive next season. Alonso would therefore start 19th and end there as well, the nature of the Imola circuit once again limiting his ability to make a pass on well anyone. Maybe though this was just clever calendar planning, as these racetracks that aren't actually any good for actual racing was just building us up for the jewel and F1 sh crown, Monaco. Guess what guys, qualifying is important here. That said, telling you that information is about as obvious as taking one look at Jimmy Savile and realising he's a kiddie fiddler. This should have been the chance at redemption for Fernando though. The tight layout of the Principality rewards driving on the edge and having genitalia so big they generate their own gravitational field and Alonso used his giant Spanish cock to good effect in 2023, taking his Aston Martin to P2 and almost making Max Verstappen use his mirrors for the first time all season. How would he fare one year on then? Well, rather than qualify on the first row, he was going out in the first part of qualifying, eventually starting the race from 14th when the Haas team misplaced their Formula 1 rulebook. Would this be a sign of good luck for car number 14 on Sunday? Well, no. Fernando was able to cause me pain by overtaking Daniel Ricciardo, then decided he'd just back off the pace as he was running in the points. Or was he? Exactly why Alonso thought the Honey Badger would be in the points was run beyond me, but after tootling around Monaco for 78 laps, he met the chequered flag, believing he'd finished 10th, only he'd actually finished 11th and outside the points. Seriously, I'm not making that up. It's been a disaster class of a three-race stint then, hasn't it? But in fairness, it does coincide with a new upgrade package fitted to the AMR24s back in Miami, so surely that's to blame for Alonso's sudden inability to drive. Well, you see, I'm not so sure about that. Lance Stroll arguably has one of the most comfortable seats on the Formula 1 grid right about now. Since 2021, he's had some form of multiple world champions sat alongside him at Aston Martin, 
which is kind of a win-win situation for the Canadian. If he beats this world-class driver, then he's the dog's bollocks and gets an extra cuddle from Daddy Stroll. If he loses to his teammate, well, this is Lance Stroll we're talking about and our expectations were f***ing low to begin with. Combine this with his almost inability to get fired, what's not to love? Well, Lance has somehow pulled the impossible out of the bag and still managed to lose this win-win scenario. While Alonso was doing bits for the team in 2023, Lance was, well, he was f***ing nowhere. When he did appear out on our screens, he was usually wedged halfway into a Tech Pro barrier and forcing Max Verstappen to build his 15-minute lead all over again. That appeared to carry through into the start of 2024, but just as the Miami upgrade package sent Alonso back into the dark ages, the Canadian was beginning to show his more experienced teammate up. From the Miami sprint onwards, Lance has outqualified Fernando at every single event, the gap averaging at around 2 to 3 tenths of a second, which becomes a little bit more if Alonso decides he wants to do a spot of dirt racing. So what exactly has happened here? Could Stroll have just acclimated better to his new car's upgrades, or is Fernando's new package flawed in some way? Or has Lawrence Stroll just swapped over the car's transponders? Actually, you know what, I'm still in for believing that one. In all fairness, it is important to stress that this is still just three race weekends, and I'm sure you've already told me in the comments that it's way too early to start judging, and look, I get that. As I feel like I say in every single video, I'm a Daniel Ricciardo fan, and he's been shit for about 50 races and it's still too early for me. But if this does continue, could Aston have just made a mistake in re-signing their once leading man on a multi-year deal? There were murmurings of future-proofing that outfit instead of committing to the Spaniard, and they of course could have been a whole load of bollocks, but could they just end up regretting that decision? At the end of the day, I'm not a psychic and can't peer into Fernando's brain to see what's going on with a two-time champion right now, but I'm all for hearing your theories down in the comments. Let me know what you think. What is wrong with Fernando Alonso? If you enjoyed this video, I'm on a bit of an uploading spree at the moment, so a like on this one and a sub to the channel would really help show me that my life has some sense of meaning. I want to say a massive thank you to all the patrons and channel members who got this one a few days early, especially to those who have just joined up in the last week or so. Your money really does help fuel my raging alcohol addiction. Now I'll be back with more content later in the week as we've got yet another F1 IndyCar doubleheader on the weekend. Until then though, have a good one.